Hello, welcome to the Atheist Dragon. And I'm your host, the Atheist Dragon. So, not just a few moments ago, we was watching South Park and start laughing about it. Then I reminded Cedro of an episode that was far earlier, maybe a season or two, we're binge watching on HBO Max. And it was the one with uh, Cartman went to a foster home. Now, while there's a lot of jacked up stuff in that episode, the main point of the episode was about being um, agnostic. And they drinking Dr. Pepper and stuff. Why? Because you don't know what flavor soda it is, so it's right in the middle. And that's what they're teaching about agnostics. And me, I'm not an agnostic in that term when it comes to religion. Why? Because either it is or it isn't. There's some things either you are or you are not. And they try to generate gray lines when it comes to classification. You know, you're not technically this or that. Well, you're not really this or that. But you're going on the title, if you've seen it or whatnot, Death, Why Religion is Fake. And it has a lot to do with this. No one knows what happens when you die. No one knows. And because of that, people fear it. It's the great unknown. It's the end of everything you hold dear. Just take the current pandemic for a very modicum brief example of death. The very thought of changing your way of living for a mere three to four months compelled people to rebel brutally against it. I'm going to go out without a mask. I'm going to lick the deodorant bottles. I'm going to spit on babies. I'm going to spit in people's face. I'm going to, uh, what else did these people do? Yeah, spit in the bottles of water and then spray it on minorities, which was the whole point of that. That's what it was. People were so afraid of changing a little bit, they used it to hyper accelerate and bolster all of their evil and racist deeds. While the decent and good people say, well, let's do this, do this the right way, get it done with, we'll suffer for a little bit, but in the long run, it will be worth it. But those others could not do it, would not, and still to this day, will not to the point where the evil has become the norm, so the good are expected to do what the evil is doing. That's, that's pretty much what happened. And when it comes to death, nobody knows. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Nobody knows, you know, how do you feel? What, what, really, what really happens? And there's people out there that say, look, it's no different than being put, than being put under anesthesia. You're, you, you're just not there. There's nothing. You go under, there's nothing. And then when it's time to wake up, for you, you're waking up. And... To a lot of people to think about that, it's scary to the point where if they do go under anesthesia again, they're terrified at the thought of doing it because they don't know if they're ever going to wake up. When just to be honest with you, for, for maybe 15 years, 20 years, my thought was if I'm going to die, I would rather be under anesthesia because you don't know and then you go and that's it. You don't have to experience feeling the pain and brutality or the, the visual and, 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 and conscious knowledge that you are fading from this existence. You're, you're going to be gone, done. That's it. And some people, you know, you got the people that are out there saying, hey, you're dead. You're gone. There's nothing. There's no pearly gates. There's no clouds. There's none of this or that. And for all intents and purposes, they're accurate. They're accurate until they do die and something else happens, but then they can't come back and tell you. So then what is the point? When it comes to religion, they make you hold on to a belief. It's not God. That's not my point. 
the God is not even a factor when it comes to religion. It's not. God isn't a factor. It's not even the point. What it is, is religion says, this is how you worship God. This is how you gain his blessings. This is how you stay in his good favor. This is how you should live your life. This is how you should think. This is how you should feel about certain matters. This is how you should believe in things that you know nothing about. And in order to make sure we solidify it, we must make you have an enemy. Ergo, anything that people are said to not like. Well, you're not to like homosexuality. Why? Who knows? Some reason. But someone in the religious area era back in the way day don't like it. So you can't like it. I mean, your religion has been used to hate minorities, induce and continue slavery, rebel against the union, rebel against everything, even to the point of using your religion and your belief in God to bolster and support a man that doesn't care about you while waving his flag and putting up gold statues even though no matter how fake they and he are guess which one i'm talking about and you're most likely wrong and probably right <laughs> but they use it to make you hold on and they use death as the great the great equalizer why because if they can tell you Hey, when you're dead, you're going to, and you worship him the right way, you'll see the, your loved ones again. Those people that you missed so much. What if the people that you missed in life were monsters? It's a bit of Stockholm Syndrome because when people die, people aren't crying because they're dead. People aren't messed up and grieving because they're dead. They're messed up and grieving because there's been a sudden and instant separation. What they are used to is now gone. It is the it's akin and liking to when somebody loses their arm in combat or their leg or it's a freak accident they lose a body part. It's the same reaction. It's stunned. It's what's happened? Why? Your life is turned upside down. It's, nothing's going to be the same. You can't function the same. So what if that person was a monster? What if that person abused and beat on them and all this other stuff? What if they raped them and 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 uh, and, and devalued them to the point that they don't even feel like they're part of decent anything around them? But see now they're gone, and while they are while they they should be happy they're gone, it's still a separation. And they say I can't wait to see him again. He was he or she was messed up, but up there. I know it's better. No evidence of an up there. But see, when someone dies, it reminds you, you are not immortal. You, in your current state, you're going to die. And it sucks. It sucks. And you have to wonder, why? Why die? What's the point of it? Why must there be death? If there is life, and life is precious, and life has meaning, then why must it end? Why? Just to be honest, you're prepared for that. It's called old age, legitimate old age. But because of the way things are, it's rare that anyone actually dies of old age. It's exceedingly rare. It is crazily rare. Matter of fact, if you were actually able to live a healthy life and you can die of actual old age, it wouldn't even be painful. It wouldn't even be painful because the few people that have been seen and spoken of and recorded, literally recorded, dying of just being old. You never see or hear about them being in pain. You don't see it. But then, whenever, no matter how brutal someone does die before their time, everyone says they went peacefully. So the lies can't stop there. 
there's a lot that I could branch off into from this subject. And I'm trying to hyper-focus. Religion will have you believe that death, death is just the next level, the next thing. So don't worry about today. Don't worry about what you do that's harmful to others. Religion is the enemy, not the belief of God, not the belief of the devil, but the following of a religion. And that's why the religion is a cult. A cult is a small group, no matter how large, it's got to be roughly in that 10,000 and lower area. That's a cult. That's a cult. And they have their ways and their beliefs. And if you talk ill of it or go against it, then you are the enemy. But a religion is when you have multiple leaders branched out into the same belief and they control every single part of you. People want to come down on Scientology, but Scientology only did the same thing that any other religion has ever done. So you're going to come down on Scientology. You need to talk about Christianity and all of its subsets. You need to talk about, you know, Islam. You need to talk about you know, all this other crap out there. And they know they're wrong. The religious people, they know they're fake. They know they're full of shit. And that's why they have to make sure they talk about atheists being a religion when it's not. And then you got those that are so religious, but they don't have that weird belief in God, but they also want to be a part of that because they, they can't lose what they have. You can't lose the family. You can't lose the friends that goes to this stuff. So you become agnostic. I don't know. I don't know. Can't we still be friends? I don't know. I can't say there is. I can't say there isn't. I don't want to. I don't want you to hate me, and I don't want the others that I don't want the believers to hate me, and I don't want the non-believers to hate me. So I don't know because that's what it sounds like. And I get being agnostic because it's like, what? How do you know there is no this or that? I get it. I get it. And at the same time, I see it wrong. Death is finite. Very. You know? And we all have our beliefs about it. I've got mine. I got plenty. But I don't I don't find my belief as a fact. I don't do that. My belief is nothing more than an opinion. It could be this, it could be that. When you die, you could probably actually wake up from this whole program. When you die, maybe you go on to another plane of existence where everyone in your era that died, your era of 16 to the age you die, will, are, is there. And they're all branched. And while not one set can bleed thoroughly into another, you're, you're finite. So anyone that dies during my time of living, I get to see them, but then I can't see those that live during their time, but they can see them. Sort of like that, I know you on the internet, I won't see you, we can't hang out because you're so far away, but you're there, and the people that you talk to elsewhere, they are where they are, and you can talk to them, but I can't, but I can talk to you. You want to introduce us, but in a strange sense, we know each other because we know you. And if you can find a liking of me and whoever that is, then you know what? Obviously, me and that other person has something in common that we'll be able to get along enough, if anything. So we're all connected. And when people die, so long as they're remembered, some people can say, hey, do they really die? And then they say sometimes you die twice. We've seen that in movies, but I've also read that way before the movies were made. When they say you die once when you do die, and then when your name is finally forgotten because everyone else dies that remembered you. Or they just forgot you. I get that. I understand that. And it's sad. There's a lot of sad. There's a lot of sad stuff when it comes to death. But at the same time, there's also some good things. When people die, they can't hurt you anymore. When certain people die, they can't hurt you. When certain people die, they can't spread an evil message anymore. And it creates a vacuum. And that vacuum should be filled by those of decent-mindedness. 
and not those that followed that person and then try to take up the mantle. Death is just as fearsome as it is, well, a freedom. Me? I wish I did know. I wish I could know. And so I can be fully prepared to what really happens. Because once you're dead, you're free. You truly are free. And being dead isn't what anyone truly, really worries about. It's getting dead is what people worry about. When people think about their life ending, they aren't thinking about what about the friends I leave behind? How do they feel about me? No. Well, you know what you should think about? You know what you should think about? Why not live my life to my specifications where I am not harmful to others? I'm, I'm showing the best of the best parts of me, my kindness, my generosity, my empathy, my sympathy. And let others know that I am a kind being trying to do best for others, whether it is neutral or not. Whether I just sit back and do nothing so they can do whatever they wish to do, or I actively help them vocally and or physically to help them achieve the good things that they want to achieve. So that when you do die, they have nothing but good things to say about you. And you are, in a sense, a martyr. Because then you want, because they, they will want to at least take up what you were doing. Your style of certain things. They have something to go on, something to live on and do and pass down so that society can actually be better. Because I'll tell you, all these religions, all these races, bigots, and whatnot have left hundreds and thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions throughout our existences. They left their dead bodies in their weight. And the good people learn how to comfort. They learn how to hide. They learn how to not rock the boat. And while religion will tell you because of the way you think or the way you look or the way you dress or the way you act that you are evil and you are not of God. And then that trans transitions into you are un-American or you're not Mexican or you're not Afghanistan. You're not of Islam. You're not of this or that. The no true Scotsman fallacy. Well, it all tells you that is those with the strength to stand up and say you are wrong. You are a detriment to society. And the only true death that should ever take place is the death of these religious cults. So that we can be free to live the way we need to live. Decent, innocuous, forward thinking, and doing for the people, by the people, for a better tomorrow, a better next week, a better next generation. Because there is no future generation without this current generation getting their act together and doing what's right. With that said, if you'd like to know more, Look into the eye of the atheist dragon. Thank you for listening.